southern region of the United States growing up uh, my stepdad was in the military so we moved down moved around a lot so I lived in Tennessee Mississippi freaking Georgia Virginia and then I ended up moving with my dad in Texas and then that's when I started training Jiu Jitsu but uh, yeah I like to represent Texas the most because I feel like that's where I developed as a man, as a young man, the most. So that's what I claim. But yeah, I mean, in the beginning, I was just like a blue belt, and uh, I was just like another guy. You know, I was tough. You went to Atlas as a blue belt. Yeah, I was a blue belt. Yeah, God, I was giving me every belt since blue belt. I was a blue belt for like four years, because I kept moving gyms. So like, you know, like when I you feel that. you reset the timer, 
as far as like every time you leave <laughs> for some fucking reason you gotta like be cool with someone to give them a fucking belt which is like super lame it's like yo like if their skill is a certain level give them the belt like don't be like don't have to like be cool with them and like get to know them like that's bullshit and that's weird like it's too personal you know what I'm saying it's just like let's be real but anyways so uh yeah it was cool I was training with all these like sick ass motherfuckers like Mike Lear Jr. Rolando, all these dudes that were like killing it in the color belts. Got freaking JT on the mat, even though I'd already been with him. Keenan got freaking Gavao. I'm even training with like the Mendez brothers, which was actually super dope. Because I remember in 2013, when I got like that, that year was the ADCC in Beijing. And I was like, I did all the training sessions for that one. And I'm training with fucking Hoffa like every single day, who, in my opinion, is like one of the best. Like, pound for pound grapplers in the game and then that's like when it all started for me as far as like where i wanted to go with grappling so you started training with galvao mm -hmm. tell us about when you won your first major championship so a year later after being in the freaking system i end up like just going on a tear nogi right and by this point i've already like committed to the nogi thing because i did the 2013 adcc camp and i remember in one month i was freaking uh oh thanks a lot boss appreciate you I'll do it. like i was saying earlier i did american nationals and i won like my weight in absolute and then i did like uh a five grappling tournament where i beat like a bunch of really good black belts like sinistro who was like killing it at, killing it at the time he had just won nogi worlds at black belt and I beat him as a purple belt. And then uh, I ended up losing the finals to Marcelo Mafra, who's actually really tough. Shout out Marcelo Mafra. And then uh, basically after that, I went to the Nogi Pans in New York. And that was the first tournament that I ever went. Like, I actually traveled outside of, like, the state and won. You know what I'm saying? I I'd always been traveling, but I'd never won an event. Um outside of my state traveling but so i ended up winning nogi pants at the heavyweight i had like this dude named jimmy frederick who was like this like 240 freaking guard player that only did knee bars and heel hooks and he was like a sick inverted like sick guard guy so i was just training with him and so me and, and like training with him was like indiana jones shit like you're just like dodging and ducking and all these like different types of leg attacks so that got me really good and then I went to ABCC trials, and I ended up, like, as a purple belt, like, just tapping out uh, my first four matches. And, like, these dudes were, like, black belts, like, like Florida American top team. And that's when I ended up meeting up with Daryl, Daryl Christian. That was the year. No, 2014, end of 2014, he started working with me. But 2015, we really ramped it up, and we started training, like, twice a week type thing. And uh, I'm training really hard. And, uh... I was like killing it in the gym I remember I was like leveling up fast like cuz I don't know for some reason like I feel like especially like with my group that I surround myself with like I I do not stick with the pack as far as like like if you look at me and you look at all the other guys at Autos I don't really I'm not really with those guys like I, those guys are my training partners they're my brothers but I am outside of the pack doing my own thing and the group that I have, like, surrounded myself with over the years has helped me, like, get on this fast track of as far as, like, where I see myself mentally. And when, once the mentality changed, I was able to, like, raise the, raise it, the, raise it physically as far as, like, actually become that. So, literally, like, just by me being in the ADCC, like, I literally leveled up. Just by me being in the event, I got, like, way better. It was weird. How did, uh, how did, you know, having Andre Galvao as your coach and mentor, how did that help prepare you to compete in ADCC, seeing the success that he's had there? I mean, it just makes it easy as far as just, like, I just got to copy what the big man does, or just, like, at least 50% of it, at least, at least a little bit percentage, just, as, just to know I'm going in the right direction, that's all I really needed, so it was kind of easy compared to, like, when I was, like, in Texas, not really knowing what to do. 
So I, uh, last week in training, I got a uh, hip toss onto my face, and I was concussed, and I've been concussed for like the last week. And uh, my strength and conditioning coach, Alex here, uh, is going to run me through a concussion test. It's actually the same thing as a sobriety test, too. So. so we make sure that the head stays towards the center. And as we go out to the side, you can see today's actually a lot better, but you can still see his eyes darting towards the center a little bit. So it's actually really good. With this much time between now and ADCC, you can see that it's really subtle at this point. It's just darting back at little points. A few days ago, it was like all the way back to the midline, right? So he's doing a lot better. Cool. So. The majority of the things that I learned not to do happened when I was wrestling in college. Um, constantly thought that more was better. Thought that if I killed myself in the weight room, that it would translate perfectly to the mats. And that's when I started to find that there is a sweet spot for training, um, especially cross training for some event. I'm not trying to train these guys to be the best at working out, right? Obviously, exercise technique is important. It's important we keep them safe in here, but they really have to be ready to go. So when we're in here, we're hitting really effective movements, um, and we're making sure that the things that they're doing aren't a waste of their time and effort, because everything has to be directed uh, towards that event. Um, in the past, I had done a lot of very inefficient things myself and saw that there are some things that translate real well to the mats. There's some things that don't translate that well at all. So we really want to focus on the things that are most effective such that we can get that stuff done, allow them to progress, um, and then send them on their way so that they can have their mats on. You know, the difference with athletes in general population is that with you know someone who comes into me and strength training is all they're doing, well, that can really be the cake. Uh, you know, the main batter, meat and potatoes of what they're doing. Whereas when I'm working with an athlete, that's the icing on the cake. Uh, the strength training or things that they're doing off the mat is the complement to their sport specific work. And so we need to be careful to balance the right volume, making sure that they're able to fully recover, getting them stronger without adding a ton of mass, depending on if they're in a, a particular weight class, it may be easier or tougher for them to make weight. A lot of different balls in the air are things that we're trying to juggle while making sure that they are peaking for their major competitions and I'm not trying to turn them into a power lifter or a bodybuilder. It's how can I really you know, get myself in their shoes, their perspective, and understand what is optimum and what is ideal as opposed to what's gonna get me a lot of likes on Instagram. We are literally talking about a sport that is based on destroying someone else's joints. The more resilient we can make someone's body from head to toe, the better off they're going to be. And he's made huge strides in that regard. When he first came to us, there were a lot of issues with his feet from just the leg lock game, constant submission attempts, had some issues with sciatica, uh, impingement in his hips, you know, flares up, flare up there, there would make it hard for him to really consistently train. And the work here has really allowed him to hit the mats hard on a regular basis and stay injury free for his sport. And just the, the consistency that he's been able to apply over this past uh, year or two has been huge. Sure. So our goal is to have our athletes peaking and feeling at their absolute best for the major competitions. So this week and, and even starting last week has been a gradual taper or reduction in his training volume. Uh, we like to use the quote, I think this was from JT Torres, that turkey's done, it's time to eat. I'm not uh, going to be making him any stronger or more explosive this week. It's been the work from months and years of consistently putting in the effort here and uh, on the mats uh, to really allow him to be feeling at his best. So right now, yeah, we're getting in some decent work on the bike. We're doing a little bit of work uh, uh, with a bar on his back, a few other things, but the big focus is uh, getting him ready for Sunday, or Saturday and Sunday. You know, the goal is to keep the goal the goal. This week, I don't really care if he's setting a PR, un unless it's on the podium. Tell us about getting the invite to this one. So I got the invite to this one. No, you were gonna get invited, but for sure. I, I in 2017 after my matches, like I talked to a lot of the guys, and they were just like, "Bro, like you killed it, like, like you, we want you to be in the next one." That's what they were saying. Like the heads of the guy, the heads of the ADCC, they're like, "We want you to be in the next one. You were very exciting, like brown belt, you know what I mean." And so I was just like, "Cool, dope." And you got your black belt right afterwards. And yeah, a month later. A month later, I got my black belt from Andre. One more, one more. One that was tough. One more. And. Michael Press, come here. Oh. 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 Yeah. I'm on the mindset, like, whatever happens to me is the best for me. So I'm not really, like, tripping on the outcome at all. I just know one thing. I'm going, I'm getting after it on Saturday and Sunday. And I think that's what it takes to be the best. So, yeah, that's exactly what it, what it is. I prepared my body to make sure that I can get after it 100% on Saturday and Sunday. I think that I have what it takes to be, that's what it takes to be the best. And if not, 
I'm okay with that too. How about the uh, how about the super fight between Galbal and Felipe Pena? How do you see that going? Uh, domination, probably gonna sub that dude in like a minute. I think Galbal's gonna finish him. Quick. I just feel like Philippe's like a slow grappler. Make him uncomfortable, makes more mistakes. If it's a fast grappler, slow him down. Heavy, wet blanket style. And so like, Philippe's a slow grappler. Galvao can do both. Galvao can do fast grappling and he can do slow grappling. And so I think the fact that he can blend in both, whereas Philippe can only do one style, Galvao's gonna be way more dangerous. Just with the fucking rhythm, you know what I mean? Just the pace, and I watch you guys are gonna see. This is where you put the clip of Galvao Wolf and this dude. So, thought processes for the next day. Um, you, you, uh, Empty, dead, sad. Just wake up. Please let this all be a dream. That's what was going through my head. What was the I was next? Like, I hope I. I wish I was dreaming. I wish I was dreaming. I wish I, I have another chance. I hope I am just asleep and I get to wake up and I actually go do it. The fortune school. Fuck. Leonardo DiCaprio, Romeo Juliet. I defy you stars. <laughs> Juliet. Juliet. Yeah, that was me. My first match, I just remember dominating the whole time from the be just like moving from the beginning of the match till the end of the match. I remember getting a lot of pass attempts, a lot of uh, 
turtle attempts, a couple a back take attempt, a lot of submission attempts as far as like guillotines. And I'm trying to think about like what he did versus what I did. And the only thing that maybe he did was I went for an ankle lock, a belly down ankle lock that wasn't even really there. It wasn't there and I ended up passing his guard off of it anyways. And then that's when I almost took his back too. Adam Wardzinski, I know he won the European trials. I know he does a lot of gi tournaments. He's a gi guy. And uh, I knew that he won the European trials and I, I knew that he liked to play butterfly guard, but that was about it. I feel like I was just dancing on him the whole time. I was just warming up, cruising, getting ready, just getting to my flow, you know what I mean? Getting uh, getting the side control a couple times. And then, yeah, I thought I had done enough to win, you know what I mean? So uh, after the match, I just figured I won. It's not the best way to win, but, you know, I was going for the kill. I was pushing the pace. If you watch the match, I had a lot of attempts. I was attacking a lot, like moving a lot. Always going into his guard. I don't know. Next time, I'm just going to dominate. Was there anything in particular that you felt he was good at? Uh, he was good at pushing me away. The next day, had to move forward. The prospect of the open weight was available. I put my name in the bracket. I wanted to do it. I didn't know if I would be able to just because my teammates were doing better than me. And of course they should get the pick over me. And I'm okay with that. And I understood that. So I was just gonna let let it all work out, see what happened. I put my name in. I let everybody know that I was down. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm a proud person, and I think I'm a man of uh, morals. I'm a morally sound person. So I didn't. I knew that my other teammates deserved it more than I did, judging from how they performed versus I performed. So I knew that. So I wasn't necessarily. I didn't. I wasn't like, oh, we'll pick me over so and so. I was like, yo, I want to be in. Let me know. If I can be, that's it. You know what I mean? I, I mean, that's just the way I am. And uh, I ended up getting the invite to do it, which was great. And I got and immediately, like, that whole sadness just went away and it just went to business time again. And this time it was against a former foe of mine, uh, Patrick Gaudio. So tell, take us back. We know you fought Patrick Gaudio before. Um, take us to that match, ACB, Dubai. Or is it Qatar? Qatar. It was Qatar, ACB. I got invited by this uh, Chechenian uh, organization called ACB, and these guys were known out, known for like paying out big. So they hit me up. They're like, "Oh, come through to this eight eight uh, man Grand Prix." I went. I ended up having Gaudio first, and uh, it was three five minute rounds. And not in the first round, nothing much happened except me going for a uh, inverted or outside heel hook, and then coming up on a single leg, and then almost taking him down. That was literally the only thing that almost happened. And then in the second round. I, uh, we ended up shooting at the same time. You guys, you guys want to get this? But, uh, we ended up shooting at the same time, ended up splitting heads, and I was cut open on the top of my head. They taped me up, and I was bleeding. I had a big gash, like, right here. You can feel the scar still. And, uh... I had a big gash on my head and freaking we kept going and then nothing really much again nothing really was happening like he wasn't doing much and then again I almost like he, he's trying to pass my guard and I come up on a drag to a front headlock and I switch to the single leg and I jump on his back and I'm on turtle and he's trying to run he's literally running out of the mat and I'm stuck on him and we literally go down we fall off the podium and I'm and I still have the grip and everything and like it was like like he definitely fled the mat and we reset, they didn't let me start with any grips. And that was like literally all that happened, right? He didn't have anything for me, I'm like I'm sitting here, you can watch the video, we can put a clip up, right, from YouTube. And there's literally no, nothing that he did that uh, constituted him to get the win. So I definitely won that, but they ended up disqualifying me on blood, I'm bleeding, because I was bleeding, that was the reasoning. And then after he won off of that blood time, he got on the microphone and the Portuguese said, so that's what happens when you talk shit. And I'm just like, what? What happens when I talk shit? You, I get disqualified. I'm bleeding. After I like whooped you with a cut on my head. Twice. And uh, I was just getting ready mentally just because uh, I know I can beat that guy. Because I already did before. So yeah, round two. I, I actually do start going after him, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, like right in the beginning exchange, he pulls guard. Uh... After I do like some fake ducks and get, let him know that I'm like, I didn't want to let him know that, but I guess I, 
I moved too good for him to, and then he just sat, and then he pulled, he tried to get on my leg, and then I ended up like sitting for like an inverted heel hook, and then I switched it to the outside, to the outside 50-50, and as I'm going for like the heel hook, I remember I'm like chasing it, and I'm, I'm like, oh, I got it, I got it, like I, that's in my head, I'm like, oh, I have this, like I'm about to tap this dude out, and like as I'm wrapping it up, I'm like, his leg, he's just kicking his leg, he's like literally, like, and I remember it was like a giant, it was, like I was like on a pendulum, and I was just like, dude's leg was just so you know what I mean I was literally moving with it and then he like kicked the concrete and my head collided with the concrete and I remember just everything just went like extremely I was like extremely dizzy like total eyes blurring and it's while I'm competing I'm like oh shit and I'm touching my head and I'm like bleeding I'm like oh shit I'm bleeding and I'm like trying to show the refs like yo I'm bleeding like what's going on and I could feel the cut in my head and then they like pull me over to the side and then uh freaking uh the the, the freaking uh, medic's like, oh, what's going on? And I'm like, I just got a cut. And he's like, oh, you didn't get cut? Let me see. Like, I don't even think you're cut. And I'm like, yes, I'm cut. And they were just like, are you good to go? Where are you at? And I'm just like, oh, I'm at ADCC. Even though like my, I'm like literally like, whoa, whoa. I, you know what I mean? I had like that. Uh, it was like another. It, it was like another moment. I felt like I had just didn't like a whip it. So that was another one where you just like. Lack of oxygen. Yeah, I was like, whoa, whoa. My eyes were like rolling in my skull, and they were like, "What's your name?" I was like, "Mike Perez." They're like, "Where are you at?" And I was like, "ADCC." And then uh, they were like, "What you? What are you doing here?" I was like, "I'm about to whoop this dude." And they're like, "All right, he's good." And then I was like, "Are you sure I can't take bubble? I'm literally bleeding." They're like, "No, no, you're good." I was like, "Okay, I guess I'm good." <laughs> I'm literally bleeding, and so we continue to go. And I remember like Gaudio comes by, and he's just like looking at my head, and I'm like, "I'm bleeding." He can't doesn't speak English, and he just points to like a scratch on his forehead. He's like, like basically like me too. I'm like not that you idiot like i've got i got a cut on my it's different like what are you talking about like versus a freaking scab versus an actual cut from a con like like what's going like what are you doing dude like jesus christ so uh anyways i don't even really like that dude that much to be honest and uh we keep going and this time i'm push, uh, pushing the pace like i'm going for like takedowns uh, I remember he went, he pulled guard again, and I started diving for his back off of a crab ride because he started trying to go for like a leg, and I inverted on it, and I started going for the body lock from upside down crab ride, and I'm following him, and I can hear the crowd like, Whoa! like they're all worried, like, oh shit, this is about to take his back, and dude, that moment I just felt like, oh, let me tap this dude out, like I can, t and so I went for the body lock, and I immediately jumped for seatbelt so I could get a bite on his neck because his hands were busy. So I just went for the, I was like, all right, let's, let's put this dude out again, going for the kill, you know what I mean? And and uh, when I jumped for the seatbelt, I ended up falling, I got, I was too high and ended up slipping off. And then I'm on my back and I'm playing guard, he's trying to pass, but like nowhere near getting close, like no way would he ever pass my guard, you know what I mean? No way. And then uh, I'm like, I came up for like a, I remember I started going like X guard with the ankle lock, I tried to kick him and then I came up on an Iranian. And like I'm like I remember he's sprawling and then I just like power up and I'm like one hand put him all on my back and I just come under and he starts like moving and then I switch to a seat, uh, sweep single and he just kicks out and just like backing up and I'm just like oh I got this dude running now you know what I mean like let's keep it up I'm building momentum and then like he I remember he goes for a single leg and uh, I get a front headlock off and I'm like oh I got the guillotine and I sprawl and I get everything free he's not touching me at all and I get the guillotine tight. And then I and then I jump to close guard, right? And I'm like, oh, I got it. And then I just feel like him popping up, popping up, slipping, slipping. And then he postures up. And then he's in my close guard. And then I'm trying to turn away. And he's got my hips. I'm just like fucked. And he end of, and uh, it should have been a freaking negative. I don't think it should have been two points because uh, he didn't. He wasn't going for a takedown. First, they gave you a negative. Then they yeah. It to two points. Yeah, and I disagree with that. I don't think it was two points. Point is, uh, I'm still attacking him, and I'm making, and I'm putting him on the runs. I remember like uh, he went for another takedown off of another guillotine. And I'm just trying to I'm, like I'm trying to put this dude away. I want to tap him out. Like I want to submit. I'm always gonna go for the submission. Like I know I could definitely just like be more tactful and just like not move as much and just kind of conserve and wait. But honestly, I don't want to win like that. I used to compete like that a lot as a blue belt and purple belt, and it's just not very gratifying. You know what I mean? I don't want to be that guy that just never subs anybody. I don't want to be that guy that doesn't push the pace. You know what I mean? So I went for it, and uh, he ended up taking me down. I turtled off of it, and uh, I could feel him getting more and more tired. And then I'm like, and then like I'm escaping everything. He's trying to like hold my body. Like he's just trying to squeeze for his dear life, and I'm moving nonstop. 
rolling, I'm inverted, I'm Granby rolling, and I finally get out, and like, I'm snapping him down, he's like running out of bounds, I'm like shooting single legs, like making him just like, I'm working him, and I can just feel him fading and breaking and fading, and he's just looking at the clock, and he's just like praying that I can just feel it. There was no more attacks coming from him at all. And granted, I can't blame him for that, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I bring a high pace, and the dude was tired, so like good for him to be able to uh, barely scrape by, but so it ended, up, it ended up with me just like breathing down his neck just like I'm coming for you bro like he knows I don't think he wants to compete against me again what happened no no his first match of the day oh his hand he was trying to mercy me a lot and pinch my fingers and I got the counter mercy where I like I'll move one of my digits over like the middle uh, the middle joint of his finger and so when he mercies I just flex my hand and it it definitely it definitely dislocated his hand like turned it into an L immediately I uh, I was uh, Left. I'm a freaking winner, dude, and I'm not gonna let any losses bug me. So I wasn't too bummed. I was actually happy I was able to go out for this kill. I was, I mean, regardless of my performance, like as far as like not getting the medal, like I love the way I competed. I gotta, I'm gonna keep competing like that. Of course, I'm gonna add to it, but I love the way I move. I love the way I, I've learned to move compared to how I used to move. Like when I used to be very static and not really attack much. Now I go for it. Now I'm. I'm rolling the dice, like even with the Wardzinski match, from the beginning and to the end, from the moment of the first bell to the end bell, I was moving, and you know, and I'm proud of that, and I'm proud of myself, and I'm proud of getting after it with Gaudio. I'm proud of me going for the sub. I'm proud of me like showing up. I'm proud of me being there, and uh, I know I will not be denied forever. And I'm gonna keep moving, and I'm just looking to the next time, 2021. Where do we go from here? We. Uh, we keep it up, bro. We don't stop. I'm about to go lift weights literally like in like an hour. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to go back to the stage that I was in in pre-camp where I was lifting three times a week. I wasn't necessarily going too hard in the jiu-jitsu room, but I was doing good conditioning. I'm just going to stay in shape, keep progressing. I'm going to be drilling a lot, uh, start working on the hands a little bit. I want to kind of put my, my efforts elsewhere for a little bit just to, you know, expand my horizons i'm not just a grappler i feel like i'm i'm capable of being good at a lot of things so i really want to get good at that and uh i really want to explore that and progress and just uh i want to do nogi worlds i want to tear it up in nogi worlds i want to let people know that you know i mean people already know what's up people know that i'm one of the best and i know i'm the best and i know like you guys know i'm the best too i just got to prove it but not just not for them fuck them for us you know what i mean